Hello, my friends. Welcome to another episode of World of Warcraft. My name is Wilfred. In this video, I'd like to share with you my casual rating on the various aspects of Dragonflight based on my initial months of playing the game. After all, I have to pay $14.99 a month to continue playing. So one month is a good time to evaluate the expansion. And as I said, I am a casual player. Our views may vary. Now, 28 hours of gameplay on the latest expansion Dragonflight is not considered as long for a huge MMORPG like World of Warcraft. Previously, I've sunk in more than 6,000 hours playing up to Catechism in the year 2010. I've left the game for around 10 years, but I've made a promise in the past that I would return to WoW when Blizzard releases a new class and a new race. Dragonflight has struck Thier, a new dragon race that over one new class, the Evoker. Hence, I'm back. I like the deep level of customization on both the dragon form and its visage. I also like the auto switching between the two forms. I don't really like the genderless design of the dragon form, but I can live with it. Hoovering by jumping is fun, though at time during solo combat, it may get me into trouble as I launch ahead and aggro other groups. I can fly for short distances too, I just don't like the long cooldown, it feels too restrictive. I don't really like the devastation DPS specialization. The whole hoovering mechanism in dealing damage while moving doesn't quite work for solo gameplay as I tend to aggro other groups. I do like the preservation healing specialization. I've played all healer specializations in the game. Preservation evoker brings something unique to the table. Strong in AoE heal in a tight area with good mobility, but I find myself struggling when the group is spread out or I need to form a single target or burst heal. One of my least favorite aspects of WoW is questing. It generally breaks down into a few broad types. Kill something, fetch something or rescue someone, go talk to somebody or listen to a story. I have leveled to the max mostly through playing the dungeons. I know I've missed out a lot on progress. I think questing is bearable when you are in a group, but soloing is boring. The cutscene though is rather nice. Unfortunately, I don't get much of the story at all. Compared to ground mounts, whereby I often see the game designer restricting freeform flying on new zones till late game, Dragon Riding does give options for traveling within Dragon Isles. The cooldown required for the dragon to recuperate vigor thus means I would be doing something else like watching a Netflix video while waiting. I know the experience can be improved by discovering and earning dragon glyphs. I just wish there are, there's a better way to track my progress besides having to install a third party mod. I absolutely love playing in the dungeons. While the dungeons are the same, each group is different due to the different class combinations. The player's experience of the dungeons, gear, maturity, and skill, most groups are quiet, just down to business. Occasionally, I do encounter some great groups that have nice and fun people. One of the new features being added to the game is called Trading Post. It provides a means to earn cosmetic rewards with the inventory refreshed every month. You can lock one item to be purchased each month if you don't have enough points or trading tenders. From my experience so far, it is doable even when I don't have friends or a guild in this game anymore. It compels me to lock into the game every month. February's reward is a beautiful tiger mount called Ash Adar. You can also spend the trading points earned this month to purchase the Celestial Steed, which I've purchased with money in the past. In a way, even when I don't really spend that many hours playing the game each month, I will not feel that my subscription is completely wasted. Moving forward, I have committed to a 6-month plan, so I will hang around for a while and will do another checkpoint later this year. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.